Hello, everyone. Welcome to David and Jeff's Survivor Podcast. I'm David, and with me, as always, is... Jeff! How are you doing, Jeff? I'm wonderful. How are you today, David? I'm doing great. Uh, today's EPA podcast theme is memorable early boots, memorable early exits. People who left the game too soon, we dedicate this to the one, the only, the amazing Jeff Varner. Um, good but, night, uh, sweet prince. What? It's a good night, sweet prince. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so uh, we're going to be talking about people who may have uh, left the game fairly early in uh, Survivor and other reality shows, but made a huge impact uh, and made a very memorable time while they were on the show. So before we do that, let's first talk about our sponsor, the one, the only, Zoe's Lobster Shack. Now, I heard, Jeff, that uh, this past week you were able to go to Zoe Lobster Shack yourself. I, I actually was. I uh, I had the opportunity. I was down in Maine, so I thought, you know, I sponsor. I sponsor Zoe or Zoe's Lobster Shack sponsors the podcast. I should probably uh, patronize them. And I have to say, I was uh, I was pretty impressed. The staff was great. They had a good work hard, play hard attitude. Um, I, I was very impressed. Awesome. Yeah, um, I think that everyone should go to Zoe's Lobster Shack. And I think it's something that it's definitely a bucket list item uh, that you should check off. And uh, you never know, were there any survivors there while, while you were there? Yeah. I did not see any. Um, mm -hmm. That being said, I heard a rumor that Zoe herself was in the kitchen cooking the lobster. But I, I, cannot, I cannot confirm nor deny. So you may have had a survivor cook your food for you. I may have. Yeah. Only time will tell. But be sure to check out Zoe's Lobster Shack whenever you have the chance. So, now let's get into our top ten list. What is that this time, Jeff? Our top ten list is going to be top ten early exits. And uh, we did not put many parameters in uh, the term early exit, but I think, David, you and I can both agree the spirit of this list is, you know, not – someone who went out in eighth place. The spirit of this yeah. list is really for pre-merge, um, maybe a little, but there's, so there's no hard line, but the spirit of the list is really pre-merge. Yeah. All right. So, uh, whose turn is it to start? I think, I think it's my turn, if I'm not mistaken. Sure. So you get the honor of uh, doing number one. So I guess... My number 10 is someone that I want to make sure includes on this. I'm trying to think of people who are truly big, memorable characters that had influence during their short time in the game. And I think the first one I'm going to have to go with is someone from a fans versus favorites season who uh, was probably overplaying way too much. Um, until a tribe swap happened and it completely screwed them over. I'm talking about Joel Anderson. Oh! Uh, Micronesia. I think he was the one, they, they clearly showed him in charge of the, the fans tribe, making these decisions that strategically did not make a lot of sense to do, other than him just beating his chest to prove his dominance. Um, and it ultimately ended up being his undoing as soon as the swap happened and he's on a tribe with Chet and Tracy, two people that he had sort of ostracized. Um, and he was the uh, first one out after that. But I think that he was a big memorable character um, which, between that and his feud with Chet and just dragging him in that one challenge. I think he was definitely a, uh, a memorable early exit. Yeah, he was not on my list, but a, a good pick. Um, one that I w maybe would have considered had I noticed his name as I was looking through. Uh, yeah. my, I'll pick number nine. This one I'm actually going to go. Pr I'm going to go pretty high up on my list because I feel like you and I may not have a whole lot of um, of overlap here. I feel like there's going to be maybe a couple that we overlap on, but we're going to have a little bit of difference. So I'm going to go with my number seven. And that is going to be Ace Gordon from Survivor Gabon. Um, Ace was one of the people who they kind of touted as a big character this season. Um, you know, he he had that horrible, pretend maybe fake British accent. He had his allies, and you know, after a tribe swap, 
they all kind of turned it on him, including his biggest ally, Sugar, and he went home. And I think a lot of people were surprised. He definitely thought himself one of the biggest characters in the season. And I think the fans, maybe even even if they didn't like him, also would have agreed with that. So, Yes. All right. So my next one um, is a sort of a, a, a stranger pick, maybe, but I think very memorable. I don't know if he was as much in during his time, but he's definitely the focal point for pretty much uh, his whole stay. And this, we're going to Survivor China, Dave Cruiser. Dave Cruiser. I think Dave uh, was the center of all drama and everything on the Zanpu tribe. Uh, if there was something going on, he was a part of it. Uh, whether that's fighting with Ashley or fighting with Sharia or getting naked at a challenge, uh, he was pretty much the focal point until he uh, his tribe had enough of him. Uh, when he got Mm -hmm. What do you think? I think that's a good pick. wasn't on my list, but I, I think that was a good pick. Um, yeah. And I, I, I've noticed, and I think this is probably going to be true as we go through, um, this is probably going to be a very male-centric list. Um, for some reason, female pre-merge boots don't tend to be, uh, like, big characters. I don't know why. Talk, talk to Jeff Probst about that. Uh, but my, oh, I, I'm picking number seven, and I'm going to skip up to my number five, and I'm going to pick someone who was also screwed over by a tribe swap, and one of the people who I think could have like had a really legitimate case against Survivor about being screwed over by a tribe swap if he didn't sign his life away, um, because he was screwed by the very first tribe swap, and that is Silas Gaither. Um, he yep. was the focal point of the uh, Samburu tribe for the first few episodes. He was the one who they thought might flip for a while, and then he was full on with the younger crowd and um, kind of a villain um, amongst the older crowd. And when he went over, he happened to go over with two members of the older alliance, and they kind of sold him out to, um, to the Boron tribe pretty quickly, and he was, he was on the next bus home, so... Yes. Um, so I had him on my list. Uh, I'm actually very glad you picked him so then I can pick someone else. But yeah, definitely deserves to be on the list. Um, maybe... Uh, now it gets hard. There's someone mm -hmm. who I think is a clear number one. So mm -hmm. I want you to pick him and not me as number one. So that leaves me with some... So I think I'll pick another – I'll pick a female to add some variety to this list, and I have it between two. I'll actually have you uh, help me. We'll talk about – they're both two people who brought the drama uh, for the limited right. time there. I have Gandia and Jatia. What do you think? Hmm. I would say Jatia because Jatia also had some control along with her drama. Okay, so uh, we'll give number six to Jatia. Uh, obviously, she was just very volatile, dumped out the rice, had this huge thing with uh, Garrett, yet still somehow survived quite a few episodes uh, with all of her volatility until she finally, they decided to save Spencer over her, which uh, ended up giving us Spencer on a second chance. So, uh, yeah. Who knows? I think Jatia was sort of in the mix for a little while there for second chances as well. So I mean, yeah, I heard a that rumor. Character. I heard that rumor. I think they eventually they just realize they have too many Kagayan people and they're gonna have to bring some of them back next time because yeah, having I think five or six Kagayan people would have just been ridiculous. Yeah, and All there, right, I, got I there's not many people in that cast who you wouldn't bring back. I think. Um, yeah. For my next pick. I'm going to pick uh, someone who has played multiple times, and this particular time he played, there was a uh, there was a big gap between his previous time and this time, and so people didn't really know whether he was going to be a focal point or not. But he came in, um, was the leader of a very large alliance, did very well until one of his alliance members just made a really boneheaded move, and um, 
then everything sort of fell to shambles. But if you rewatch the first couple episodes of Heroes vs. Villains, uh, it really is the Russell vs. Rob show. And of course, they then play that up two seasons later in Redemption Island. But the first two seasons, two, first two, first like five episodes of Heroes vs. Villains really is Russell vs. Rob. So I'm going to pick Rob Mariano specifically Heroes vs. Villains edition. Although yeah. I think you could make a strong case that Rob Mariano Marquesas edition is also an early exit. Um, he was on my short list for Heroes vs. Villains, so not a bad choice. My number four, since you said Rob, I'll say Russell. But not the Russell you're thinking of, Russell Swan. Um, I think <laughs> actually Philippines, very memorable, um, as he just had this continued downward spiral um, and how he dealt with losing... I think you could also make a case for in Samoa, also an early exit with him getting magically evacuated um, and him being sort of the leader of the tribe. But I think especially Philippines, he an awful tribe, and we just saw him getting more and more frustrated and distraught and him going on these rants and uh, calling Jeff Probst Lord and all this stuff. So uh, I'm going to give it to Russell Storm. I think that's not a bad pick at all. Um, so I've got three left, my top three, and I think they all deserve to be on the list, but I really don't mind if my two and three switch, so I'm going to go with the safe bet and pick my number two here, and that is going to be someone who I, has has played multiple times, and I think, personally, every time this person plays, it's an early exit, because... I'm not. I wouldn't be happy unless they made it to final tribal council every season because I feel like they should be on every season. Um, but one season in particular, they left pre-merge, and that is going to be the fans versus favorites iteration of Jonathan Penner. Hmm. Penner. He really was a big strategic focal point of that season. At least the first. Couple yeah. Of I love Penner. I don't know if he's uh, number three on our list, but uh, I do I do enjoy him a lot. So I, at least uh, my top two are still here, so I'll pick number two. Hopefully you and I are on the same page and we'll pick number one. My number two will have to be the person that we uh, dedicated this to, just straight forward, uh, Cambodia, Jeff Varner. He was my number one. I think there's one person who is even bigger than life than him and uh, was a huge focal point. But I think Varner was definitely controlling uh, the tribe for a lot of it. He had uh, you know, some moments every single episode, um, and his four episodes was truly not enough. But he left a huge impact on the game. And truly, I don't think you can think about this first section, if you will, of Kaga, or, uh, of Cambodia without thinking of Jeff Varner. Yeah, I agree. But now I'm worried because my number three I don't think is bigger than Jeff Varner, so I don't know if I missed someone or if... So I'm gonna. what I'll do is I'll say my number three, and then if I'm wrong, you tell me who it is, and if I agree that I missed them, okay. then we'll put them in. Deal? So my oh, number deal. three is Brad Culpepper. That's what I had as number one. Okay. I, I disagree that he's better than Jeff Varner, but I do agree he's a good pick for number one. Um, he really was the focal point for that tribe, and really for the entire episode, because if you remember the first couple episodes of Blood vs. Water, the the tribe of returning players was really almost non-existent for those first couple episodes, because they were winning and you know they didn't need to do the strategic talk, and Brad Culpepper had some great great moments those first few episodes to the point where I actually was I'm not unhappy but I was surprised when he didn't make it on uh, Survivor Second Chances mm -hmm. yeah I mean I, I think he was a huge huge part of the, the early Blood vs. Water season and maybe maybe I have him higher just because he, he lasted a little bit longer and mm -hmm. I think he's still one of those persons that he made a huge impact every single episode um, and cause drama, not even on his tribe, but in the Redemption Island, and you have all these memorable moments there. Um, and I, I think that he is someone that truly uh, would be interesting to get a second chance. 
Um, and I, I hope we do get to see it at some point. I guess I wasn't really rooting him for him for this one just because there are so many choices of mm -hmm. people that I want to see. But I, I do at one point want to see Brad back in the game. Yeah. I, um, I also think his exit was a little bit more dramatic than Jeff's. Like, exactly. Yeah. You kind of knew think, Jeff was going to go home. Yeah. Whereas the whole tribal council where Caleb looks over at Sierra and Katie and says, I'm going to vote for Brad. And then Vetus flipped, or uh, is it Vetus or Hayden yeah. flipped on him too? Like oh, that's, yeah. that was awesome at the time. And that really started a lot. I mean, if you think of Blood versus Water and Kagayan, those two seasons in a row, those two seasons had a lot of, talking at tribal council trying to figure out what's going to happen and i think that tribal council kind of started it all yeah that's what i said i think uh cole pepper came and ended with a bang uh, i i liked varner a lot like i said he had so much but yeah he got injured and it was sort of a foregone conclusion that he was going to go i mean he left fighting but it's still still the exit was definitely bigger on cole pepper's part so while we're on the subject of Jeff, let, maybe we can just transition a little bit to talking about his exit. Um, what could he have done? What could Jeff Varner have done to save himself? I think after he got injured, there's nothing that he could do. I think because in talking with the interviews, his injury was much uh, worse than even they portrayed in the show. So oh, I really? think, yeah, like he said – his whole foot was swollen. His toe was literally purple, blue, black. And, uh, I mean, it took him forever to walk anywhere. And he was he was limping big time. So, I think after that, there was really, you know, he he's not even going to be helpful in challenges anymore. He's going to be a big hindrance. So, I think after that, there was nothing that he could really do. If he was, you know, if he hadn't had the injury, maybe he could uh, have talked his way. And, and, you know, got Abby more, more convinced of getting Lou out. I don't know. But mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. I don't think – as soon as he got injured, I don't think there was a chance because they're so hurting already that they, they can't afford to have an injured person. Right. So had he not been injured, do you think that it would have been a better strategic choice to keep him or to vote out Wu? Oh, I, I think strategically the tribe made the right move. Um, I think Varner is a big, uh, much bigger threat, a much bigger flight risk, and actually knows what's going on in the game as opposed to Wu. Um, and I think Wu is nothing but loyal. <laughs> he just wasn't loyal to Abby. <laughs> but, but I mean, what else is he going to do? He's not going to be the one jumping and making schemes with the other people. So, so I, I think they... For the tribe, they made the right strategic move. For the audience, they made the worst move possible. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I was very sad. Um, as you know, you and I both predicted Varner to do well. Um, but perhaps this is a, uh, a lesson in how to do Survivor. Or how to do returning seasons of Survivor. Like, all the pregame alliances in the world don't help you out if you end up on a tribe with Abby and Tasha. <laughs> yeah. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, he was your uh, winner pick, Jeff. He was, and he was your winner pick too, David. When we did no. the when we did the sim, yes, he was. Uh, we, but we collectively chose him. Okay, but after our episode one, when we did the draft, you chose Jeff as your winner. I chose Kelly Wentworth. Yeah, I think I think you've got a good shot there. <laughs> um. Yeah, so we will uh, we'll keep tracking that. Is there anyone, uh, any other memorable boots from any other shows other than Survivor that you think? I feel like Big Brother is really prone to memorable early boots because there's three episodes a week. So like okay. if, and especially that first week, there's like five episodes before they boot someone. So if someone gets booted fourth or fifth, you've seen them for 17 or 18 episodes. Um, yeah. So let me, I'll just look and see if anyone. Um, yeah, I have a list right here. Let me tell you some people who stand out to me. Um, so even from season one, which people don't forget, or for people do forget, uh, Will 
Collins, um, aka Mega, uh, the very first person voted out of Big Brother. I think he was very memorable, mainly because the rest of the cast is completely boring. <laughs> And they actually penalized him for trying to make the game interesting. <laughs> yes. Um, a lot of people forget Boogie was a pretty early boot his first season. Yeah, um, he was. Mike Boogie, pretty uh, pretty early boot. Um, Jace in, uh, Jace in All-Stars was an early boot. Well, Jace in Season 5 was an early boot. His yeah. first season. He was the fifth one out, I think. I think he's one of the epitomes of this awesome player who, you know, is just an early boot. And his um, friend Scott, same thing. Yeah. Uh, well, no, not Scott. It, it that wasn't that there was one of, wasn't one of his Alliance members early boot and fairly memorable? Not Scott. <laughs> okay. I, season five I've seen once like two years ago, so – uh, some other big early boots from season six. You have Cappy, Eric. Mm -hmm. uh, Lemon, he started his whole friendship alliance. He was like the ringleader, but then he he actually got out third. Also, the other big one from that season, Caser. Yeah, who got evicted and then brought back and then evicted right again. <laughs> Wide Roy. Really. Um, let's see. I'm trying to think. Anyone else? Jesse? Ronnie, Ronnie from season eleven. Ronnie, uh, Jesse from season ten and sort of season eleven, both an early boot there. Um, Rachel Riley in her first season was sort of an early boot. I mean, she was fifth out. Yeah, that's pretty early. Um, Other than that, oh, Devin Shepard, huge uh, character for all, for being a third boot from a more recent season. I would say Devin's a big character. Yeah, I would agree. Audrey from this last season, pretty big character. And J Jason was a pretty big character, too. So, yeah, I, I think Big Brother lends itself to more really, truly memorable early boots. And a lot of times, I can remember the early boots more than I do the uh, the later people. Yeah, there seems to be a lot of people in Big Brother, even maybe a little bit more so than Survivor, who are kind of not characters who get pretty far. Mm -hmm. um, Survivor, there's usually a couple people like that towards the final seven, eight. Um, but in Big Brother, it seems like you've got once you get to the final, you know, seven or eight, there's maybe two or three really big characters and yeah. some fluff. And I, yeah. that's actually when I usually quit watching. I'm really bad at sticking with seasons of Big Brother all the way through. I usually go back and watch them later. But when they're live airing, I tend around the seven or eight spot to kind of drop out because if, I, like, if there's not enough exciting characters, I won't watch it live. And with Big Brother, if you don't watch it live, like, oh, I missed a week, that means I have three hours to catch up on. And so I just, you know, like this last season, I quit around the Becky boot. I was just like, I'm not going to watch this anymore. And this season was even good. I liked it. From what I saw, I usually watch the finale then. Yeah, yeah, it was it was a pretty decent season. Um. Yeah, I'm trying to look at Celebrity Apprentice. They've had a couple of memorable early boots. Gene Simmons comes to mind. Oh, um, yeah. Tom Green was another one who caused a lot of uh, trouble. He was a pretty early boot. Um, regular Apprentice, not not so much. No. <laughs> not, not too many uh, memorable early boots. But... Uh, even Kevin Jonas, I think, was a pretty memorable early boot. He was one of the first ones to take on Geraldo and uh, lost because Trump has a thing for Geraldo. Yeah, I completely agree. <laughs> I mean, Otorosa was out 10th place on, on All-Stars. Yeah. So, there. I mean, uh, there's some really big – Victoria Gotti. Like, remember how many times you think she fought with 
uh, Lisa Lampanelli. Well, she was on the air for two episodes. You know, there's some there's some early early people who left. Yeah. Richard Hatch, even eleventh place, like he was a big character on that season. So, uh, is there anything that any qualities we could say that can make up a what can make someone a memorable early exit? Well, I think it's Survivor, and this is this was uh, embodied by our list. Like males in Survivor tend to be much bigger characters, and I don't mean important. I mean like larger than life. Look at this crazy person type characters. Mm-hmm. Um, that tends to be the trend. Female, like when you consider female big characters, you point a lot more towards people who made it later in the game. And whether that's an editing thing or whether that's how, you know, whatever, I think that's definitely something, specifically for Survivor, that's true. Well, I think for for most of the people on their list, something that I I think is consistent is that they bring drama. Mm Mm-hmm. And, uh... And again, we don't we don't have like Colton on our list, which is debatable. But that's sort of like he, a, a he was game. on my short. He was on my top ten, my personal top ten. Yeah, but uh, you know, there there's lots of ways that can be positive, entertaining drama. I think Barner had a lot of entertaining drama, um, and, and different people like that. I think another one is if they are playing too hard, that can be make for an early boot, but very memorable to see rather than someone who's just doesn't know what's going on and is clueless and gets voted out. Yeah. I mean, obviously it has to do with editing and airtime as well. I mean, they could be a huge person, but if they're not edited that way, don't get any airtime. Any other uh, qualities that you can see for a memorable early boot? Well, the interesting thing for, um, for a show like Big Brother is they don't actually know, like they have an idea of who's in power and who's going, you know, who's going to win, yeah. who's going to get, but, but they don't actually know who's going to go home next week. Yeah. And so they have to edit people just how they are, or how they feel things might go, which mm-hmm. uh, I think is maybe a bit more honest. Yeah. Yeah. And which is maybe another reason why we have so many memorable early boots from those is because they can get a lot of airtime because they don't know if they'll be the star of the whole season or the star of two episodes. Right. Um, all right. Let's talk a little bit more about the current season. Is there anything that you can see, anybody you could see that could be on the list of memorable early boots if they were to go in the next couple of weeks? Well, I think the average choice, or the uh, average, the obvious choice is Abby. Yes. Um, I think the the other two that I would pick besides Abby would be Tasha and Savage. Both I don't know of them have in, in different ways. They've both been very, very important to the season. I don't know if I would say ta- uh, Savage would be that much of a memorable. Maybe if he had some really stellar episodes on his way out. But I mean, he, he's been he's been good, but I wouldn't say he's been great. He's had some moments, though. Like he's had some moments. Well, really, other than this hero challenge, the only other moment I can think of is him sharing the story about his wife and Playboy. Can you think he has about the story about the white? He has the the little, the little. I don't know if I remember if it was after the hero challenge or after the, uh, um, the immunity challenge. But like his moment where he was like, "We're just we're we're screwed, Jeff. Like we don't know what we're doing." I thought that was a big moment. Um, I thought his opening was a big moment where he was like, where he gave the little spiel about like, "I I'm up every night thinking about the Pearl Islands." Um, I don't know. I think he's had some. Okay. Agree to disagree. I think other ones, I think if Jeremy were to somehow get voted out, I think that would be a pretty memorable. Mm, yeah. I don't agree with, I don't agree with you on that one. More so than Savage. 
I, d- I disagree. Uh, I think Steven Fishback would, would potentially be memorable, just not in a positive way, mm. but just as a, uh, you know, the comic relief season <laughs> and just how they're editing him. But uh, I don't know. You have other people like <laughs> Joe, who they just, every episode, they just talk about how amazing he is, but they don't mm. actually. We don't actually hear from him, which is really weird. You know, we're not yeah. actually hearing what he has to say. We're just hearing everyone say how amazing he is. Yeah. But he must be amazing. He must be. <laughs> um, so let's talk about uh, a little different, but the a memorable challenge, and that is this blindfold cube challenge. Um, which seemed to be brutal this this year. Um, oh, but yeah, they they this really year, this challenge they've only ever used on all returning player seasons. So it started in All Stars, they did it again in Heroes versus Villains, and now in here. Why do you why do you think that is? Um, I don't know, but I really like the challenge. I think it's a, it's an interesting challenge. Gives us some great great things but i will say it is uh it is brutal and i thought the editing for the challenge was kind of brilliant for this one i loved it how so when they were getting the pieces they had like a montage of pieces coming back then they had a montage of joe carrying pieces then they had a montage of people getting hurt I thought it was kind. Of, I thought it worked with a challenge that you know went on for probably an at least an hour. Oh, um, yeah. I would say um, because yeah. there were sixteen pieces. That's a lot of pieces, and so they can't just like show you what happens because it would be a really long and probably fairly boring. But showing that like montage of of like here's some things that happened. Here's this one try being really far behind. Here's Joe getting them back up. Like, I thought that was smart. All right. Yeah, I, I would uh, I would agree. The, en- the editing was really cool. And it wasn't even, uh, especially the end, where they just show the Anchor tribe completely dead. You know, <laughs> so it wasn't, like, suspenseful as who's going to win at a certain point. It was just a matter of... <laughs> Look how awful, the, you know, how horrible they're doing. Yeah. I mean, I think you really felt for them. Yeah, I agree. And I will say, uh, to me, Spencer's thing looked like it hurt the most, where they, like, dropped it on his, like, his upper shin, and it, like, slid all the way down, and it looks like it probably took a couple layers of skin off with it. That mm-hmm. one looked like it hurt real bad. Yeah. Yeah, Spencer's another one that is is – getting more memorable moments as we go on of of him trying to adapt and to change what he's done. We saw him go back to his strategic side and throwing Kelly under the bus. Um, And we actually saw a confessional from Monica again. So that was nice. Yay. Now we just need one from like Kimmy and Sierra who's conspicuously absent. Well, and again, and Joe, I don't, you know, I don't know if Joe had a confessional, did he? No, he did not. Yeah. Uh, And I don't, if the previous episodes, maybe he had one or two, but again, most of the time we're just, it feels like Joe's present just because everyone's talking about him, mainly Jeff Probst. (laughs) Joe picking it up all by himself. Joe doing it again. You know, I had today, so today um, we had a work day at school. And um, I had I have tables in my room, and I wanted desks, and the person right across the hall from me, you know, wanted the opposite. And these tables were huge. They were like they were almost square in their rectangularness, and they were they weren't too terribly heavy, but they were just big and awkward. And so myself and this other teacher, um, she and I moved the tables from her room, just you know we would move one table together and then we would bring back two desks and then another teacher came in to help and he just he totally pulled a joe he just grabbed this table 
and like waltzed it in the room and we're like you're gonna hurt yourself he's like no i'm good (laughs) show off and then i tried to do it because the other person had to go to the bathroom so i tried to do it and i like totally like i got it there but i looked horrible (laughs) i was the poor man's joe like uh steven in the branch yeah it's almost exactly what it looked like (laughs) (laughs) um yeah um any other shows that we haven't talked about that had memorable memorable early boots Mm. i'm trying to think think the, the mole had a couple um Rob from season two of The Mole was a really memorable character. Blonde tip, tear, um, did impressions, was a magician. Um, There's there's some shows, but a lot of shows don't have as many contestants per season as Survivor and Big Brother do. Mm -hmm. You know, because Big Brother's up to 16 per season, and now Survivor sometimes does 20. That's a lot of contestants. And, you know, like, even The, Amaz- the Amazing Race only has usually 11 or 12 teams. Um, so I think it's harder to find shows with mem- or without memorable early boots because when you only have to show 10 people, it's a lot easier. Yeah, yeah. Everyone can get some airtime. So uh, anything else about uh, memorable early exits or about the, this episode of Survivor? No, I'm I'm satisfied. I'm very sad that Jeff left, but now I, what I told people online is now I can start making winner picks without having to use hope or imagination. <laughs> like I can make a real winner's pick without just like thinking I have to choose Jeff because I love Jeff so much. Do you want to officially make a new winner's pick? Um, I think Kelly Wentworth is a good pick, but you already chose her. Um, I think Andrew Savage I think he's had enough little things. I think he could be one. And I'll say my backup pick would be Spencer. Okay. Only uh, only time will tell. Yeah. So, uh, thank you guys so much for li- listening and or watching. We uh, want to know what you guys think. Are there any memorable early exits from any reality shows or Survivor that we didn't talk about that you want to make sure – that uh, that we mentioned. Uh, speaking of which, maybe we can quickly say the other people on our list. We alluded to that. Say that again. Maybe we uh, maybe we should mention the other people on our top ten list. Oh, maybe. I had um, I had Colton Cumbie. I had Suri Fields in Heroes vs. Villains. Um, I see. I already I already closed the document. Um. I had one more. I don't know. You you say them and maybe you'll say mine. I had Cowboy from uh, Cook Islands. I okay. had Rob Rob Z from Thailand. That's a good one. Uh, I had Lindsay Richter from Africa as well. Mm. Um, I had mentioned I had Gandhi as well. Yeah. Mike Scoopin. Oh, um, Bo- I had Bobby Mason. Bob Dog. Yeah, I had Mike Scoopin, and I sort of. Cheater, cheating wise had Burton Roberts. Uh, oh. I thought even I said taking out when he returned, I think he was memorable, you know, when he got out. And the fact that they threw this challenge and then he got out and, and he had a pretty it looked like he was beginning, you know, for the first couple episodes until yeah. Johnny Fairplay turned it around on him. So but I mean he obviously he came back and became even a bigger character. But all right well be sure to uh, let us know what you think on our facebook page even just survivor podcast or on our website serverpodcast.blogspot.com and make sure you hit the subscribe button on itunes so this podcast shows up on your computer every single week you don't even have to do anything which is my idea of how to listen to a podcast mine as well so thank you guys so much we will be back next week goodbye bye-bye always lobster shit